Alright, I started talking about glycolysis and uh, I want to finish talking about it and talk more about it and maybe define the reactions a little more closely so that you can really understand what's going on here and I'll point out of course the important reactions and um, why they're important. So in glycolysis, one molecule of glucose, okay, the important thing to remember about glucose is six carbon um, hexose sugar, okay. Um, it's converted to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, which, as I said before, that's the committed molecule of glycolysis. It's an extremely important molecule because it's the first unique intermediate in the glycolysis pathway. And that's also a six-carbon compound, though. But it eventually gives rise to two molecules of pyruvate, okay, a three car which is a three-carbon compound. So it gives you two three-carbon compounds instead of one six-carbon compound. So it's being broken down. It, this is a catabolic reaction, okay? So each reaction is catalyzed by a specific enzyme, okay? Each one has its own enzyme. Each reaction is a 10-step process. Each one has its own enzyme. ATP is required in two steps of the pathway and drives endergonic reactions forward. So essentially what I'm saying right there is it drives on favorable reactions forward. So where you see ATP used in the pathway is where unfavorable reactions are being made favorable by coupling them to ATP hydrolysis, okay? So two molecules of ATP are formed in two different reactions in the pathway by phosphorylation of ADP. So what, we're, what I'm saying here is that ADP is being phosphorylated. It's getting a phosphate group to form ATP. And that's occurring at two different reactions, or occurring in two different reactions during the pathway. And that gives us a total, in case you were counting, of four ATP molecules produced in the pathway. So overall, there's a net gain of two ATP molecules. Because remember I said just a second ago that it requires two ATP molecules to kind of initiate the process of glycolysis, okay? To drive on favorable or, or endergonic reactions. So overall, the net gain is two ATPs, and, it's re and um, those are... Re the other two are required to drive the reactions. So step one is an extremely important regulated step of glycolysis, okay? This is an extremely important regulated step of glycolysis. And the enzyme that catalyzes the reaction, which I didn't actually put the enzymes in here, but I will say this one because it's important, is hexakinase. And hexakinase is found in things like muscle cells and such, and it's it, there's an alternate form or what they, uh, or what the, uh, there's an alternate form of the enzyme in the liver called glucokinase. Okay, so in the liver there's glucokinase, in the muscles there's hexakinase. The, the more important and common one you'll be asked to talk about is hexakinase, because that one's actually subject to regulation, where glucokinase actually isn't subject to the same regulation. So, step one is a phosphorylation. It's a phosphorylation of glucose to give glucose 6 phosphate, okay? And ATP provides the phosphate. So this is one of the ATP requiring reactions, and it's coupling this ATP hydrolysis with the phosphor to phosphorylate glucose, okay? To give to provide the energy necessary to do so. Alright? And step two is an isomerization. Okay, of glucose 6 phosphate to give fructose 6 phosphate. So we're just creating an isomer in the same number of atoms and all that, just a different arrangement. Okay, so glucose 6 phosphate makes fructose 6 phosphate, as you can see here. And step three, again, I have that in bold. And why do I have step three in bold? Because it's a regulated step. And that's the phosphorylation of fructose 6 phosphate to give fructose 1 6 bisphosphate. ATP again provides the phosphate group. So it's a phosphorylation of fructose 6-phosphate. And again, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is the committed molecule of glycolysis, the first unique product. It's also, once that's made, it has to go through the rest of the reactions of glycolysis, okay? It cannot, it, all the other intermediates to that point could be drawn off and used in different pathways, okay? There's different things that those intermediates can do. Glucose 6-phosphate can be drawn off to do other things. So can fructose 6-phosphate but not fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Okay, that has to go through the rest of the glycolysis steps. And the enzyme that catalyzes that reaction is called PFK1, or phosphofructokinase 1. And that's, again, under heavy regulation. A lot of allosteric regulators. 
are used on that and um, things like ATP okay if I have a lot of ATP what do you think is going to happen um, <laughs> you know you might not even know what happened but what, what I will say about it right now is if there's a lot of ATP we're not going to need to go through glycolysis to make more ATP so that tells you right off the bat that ATP is an allosteric inhibitor all right but regardless we'll go through inhibition at another time so step four is cleavage okay so we have to cleave a bond of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate to give two three carbon fragments and those two three car carbon fragments are glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and and also dihydroxyacetone phosphate okay so glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dihydroxyacetone phosphate are the two products there all right and essentially step five is just an isomerization because we don't want dihydroxyacetone phosphate there's not much we can do with dihydroxyacetone phosphate what we, what we want or what we need here is glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate to continue going through the process okay so step five is an isomerization of that step six oxidation and, and phosphorylation of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate to give 1 3 bisphosphoglycerate. Okay, and I believe I have that stuff drawn out here. Yes, I do. So, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate plus NAD plus again, look, we need we have an electron carrier higher, you know, and it's going to become a reduced electron carrier over here. So, this also tells you that one of the things glycolysis requires is NADP plus and we'll talk about how you can regenerate NAD plus by going through um, by going through uh, different you know anaerobic glycolysis essentially or fermentation so to make lactic acid or lactate and step seven transfer of a phosphate group from 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate to ADP to give 3 phosphoglycerate. Okay, so step seven, as you can see, that's one of the um, steps where a phosphate is transferred to ADP. Okay, so phosphorylation of ADP to give ATP. So we're making ATP. And just recall that all the reactions are doubled, okay, at that point. And I have a graph to illustrate that in a, in a minute. In step eight, there's an isomerization again of. 3 phosphoglycerate to give 2 phosphoglycerate. Okay, so 3 phosphoglycerate to give 2 phosphoglycerate. Not, not terribly important or interesting. Step 9, there's a dehydration reaction using the enzyme enolase um, of 2 phosphoglycerate to give phosphoenolpyruvate. And phosphoenolpyruvate is a high energy compound, okay? And step 10 is highlighted again because that's the final step where we have regulation occurring, okay? I will tell you that something like fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is an allosteric activator of pyruvate kinase, okay? Because that, that is the enzyme that we're using here, okay? Pyruvate kinase, and that gives us phosphoenone pyruvate plus ADP, gives us pyruvate plus ATP. So it's a transfer of a phosphate group from phosphoenone pyruvate to give ADP, okay, to give to ATP, ADP, and to make pyruvate. And to kind of further illustrate all this information, if I could get it off there, I have the glycolysis pathway in all of its glory, okay? So what do we have going on here? Well, again, 6-carbon glucose starts the pathway off. We use some ATP, which gets hydro hydrolyzed to AD, ATP, gets hydrolyzed to ADP to phosphorylate glucose. Okay, that makes glucose 6-phosphate. Glucose 6-phosphate is isomerized to make fructose 6-phosphate. Okay, then we go through another regulated step which requires ATP hydrolysis to make fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, okay? So that's the second, these are called, in here they're using the term priming reactions. So this is the first priming reaction, second priming reaction, and all they mean by priming is that it's requiring some energy to get it going. Now, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is converted to the two, remember I said it's converted to two three carbon molecules glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate okay 
and there's that additional fifth step here where this dihydroxyacetone phosphate is converted also to glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. And from that point on, you can see now, look, we have two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. So we're going to make two of everything, okay, from that point on. Um, over here, you see glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. We had the NADP plus. We had the PI or the inorganic phosphate. And we reduce NADP plus to NADPA or NAD, I'm sorry, NADP, NAD plus. Okay, I'm saying NADPH. That's a different energy um, electron carrier. Please don't confuse them. So NAD plus is being is being reduced to NADH. Okay, to make 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, okay, or BPG. So, and that's happening in both these steps, which are identical here. So, 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate phosphorylates ADP then, and that's the first energy-producing reaction, okay? And this becomes phase two, of course, where we're, where we're producing energy now. And 3-phosphoglycerate becomes uh, isomerized to 2-phosphoglycerate, and then that eventually loses, is dehydrated, okay, which makes, um, which means loss of water, and that ends up giving us phospholinyl pyruvate, okay. And phospholinyl pyruvate, of course, donates a phosphate group to ADP to phosphorylate it and make ATP, all right. And the phospholinyl pyruvate is converted in the process to pyruvate, so we wind up with two pyruvates, okay. Now the interesting thing about pyruvate is it can have a couple of different fates, okay? And that's also shown here. Um, one of the fates is it can continue going through anaerobic respiration if there's no oxygen available, okay? This is what fermentation, and you can make two lactates, okay? But also the interesting thing about making two lactates, which I'll do a video on this in specific, is that you could you also make two NADP plus, okay, or NAD plus rather. I keep saying the wrong thing. NAD plus. So you make two NAD plus. That's interesting. Why? Because we need NAD plus to keep glycolysis going. So if I don't have oxygen available and I need NADP NAD plus rather, then I need to go through anaerobic glycolysis essentially, which is to produce lactic acid or lactate. Also, what can happen here is two pyruvates. The pyruvates can be converted into acetyl-CoA, and the acetyl-CoAs can enter the TCA cycle. So if I have two pyruvates, I can make two acetyl-CoAs by the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. And those two acetyl-CoAs enter the citric acid cycle, and they produce a lot of different things. They produce CO2, of course, as one byproduct, but they also produce a lot of elect reduced electron acceptors. So they produce something like six NADHs, two FADHs and two ATPs, or FADH2s and two AD ATPs, okay, and those NADHs and FADH2s are indirectly associated with creating energy, okay, because those are used then by the respiratory complexes during oxidative phosphorylation to produce large amounts of ATP, okay. And uh, another area of fermentation is of course the production of alcohol. Now this does not happen in humans as we know or else we'd be getting drunk every time we were exercising. Um, but it can also produce what's known as acetaldehyde which is converted to two ethanols. Okay, So there is also that and I will go over both of these in a separate video.